Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And for this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to build on the simple audio player that we built in our last tutorial. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a device manager that's going to allow us to be able to play our sound through different speakers or at a different sampling rate. And this builds on a common question that I kind of see around the forums and also in the Discord chat group where people are asking how to change the sample, the default sample rate and how to play their audio out of different speakers other than their default sound card. So if you notice in a regular main component um, audio app, we have this get next audio block that we call where we're able to basically play sound and normally when we just compile our project and we don't use our own audio device manager what happens is that the sound just kind of magically plays back through whatever we have our default sound card set to but what if we want to be able to choose a different sound card or if we want to allow a user to choose a different sound card or a different sampling rate what would we do then well luckily we have a couple different classes from juice that allow us to do that so if we go to our header file here and then i'm going to go to the api and show you a few things that we're going to implement in order for us to be able to do this. So basically we have our audio app component class, which is what we're using currently to uh, be able to select our default sound card and be able to uh, play out of the default uh, sound card. And then it's going to also allow us to use our own device manager where we're going to be able to make a choice for a different sound card if we choose. So if we just scroll down here through the methods that we have, and you'll see if you've ever done a, uh, an, audio, an audio app uh, default setup uh, from the producer, then you'll recognize all these methods like uh, set audio channels, prepare to play, get next audio block. And then if we scroll a little bit further down, you'll see that we have this public attributes and we have what's called a device manager. So this is the default device manager that we have that comes kind of built in with the audio app component. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I co command on, on Apple, if I command and click into audio app component, this will bring us into the juice documentation or the juice code that is kind of behind the scenes. And then if I just go up here, I'm going to actually go into, this is the header file that we're in now. And I'm gonna go into the uh, CPP so if I go into UI, into audio app component.cpp, what we can do is we can take a look down here and we can take a look at some of the code that, that kind of happens behind the scenes. So you'll see here that there are two constructors that happen that, that are possible to initialize with the uh, audio app component. So you have one where basically the one that's just the default constructor where what happens is uh, then we have a Boolean here using custom device manager as false. So it just kind of initializes it with a default uh, with, with a default uh, device manager that will just automatically kind of uh, route the sound out of your default sound card, whatever you happen to have as your default sound card at the, at the time. But then what you could do is you can use this other constructor here where basically what you can do is you can, you can declare your own device manager. And then what happens is that, you know, then the Boolean of using custom device manager is true. And then that allows us to basically be able to set up everything ourselves. So that's what we're going to do. So if we go back to our, uh, our main component header file, the first thing that we're going to do, I'm just going to jump into the audio device manager class reference here. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually going to use, we're, we're, we're actually gonna use this other constructor. So the first thing we need is an audio device manager. Sorry if you hear my dog chewing on her paws. She does this all the time when I record. <laughs> so 
Uh, first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna just give us a, give ourselves a couple lines. We're gonna do audio device manager, and I'm just gonna call this other device manager. And then what I can do is I can then go into the CPP, and then what I can say is. I can then use the other constructor for the audio app component. So I can go audio app component. And then I can say in here, I could put other device manager as I don't know why it keeps doing that. Um, and then I, in here, I could put other device manager because that's the device manager that I'm going to use. Then what I can do is I can just give myself a couple myself a couple lines, and then we can use a couple of these methods to start getting things in order. So we have the audio device manager. And then what we could do is we can use this uh, initialize method just to give ourselves a couple initial um, a couple uh, just to initialize the device manager basically. So we could do uh, other device manager initialize. So um, number of input channels, we'll, we'll put two. Number of output channels, we'll put two. We don't need an XML to call from, so we're just gonna put this to null pointer. And then select default device on failure. So I guess if it fails to initialize this, then um, it would just go back to the default device uh, and I'll put that to true. So that's fine. Now if we go and we read into the device manager here in more, I can basically just go down here and what we could do is it says here, uh, if we want to change its settings, there's a component a component to do that, the audio device selector component class. Okay, so let's go ahead and initialize one of those. So here I'm going to use a unique pointer. And the reason that I'm doing that, I find that um, these are best used in, uh, in how can I put this it, for, for, uh, for things that are going to be, that could possibly be changed in real time. So it's going to basically be pointing to a space in memory. And if that space is going to be, um, changing in real time during runtime, then, uh, it would probably be a good idea to use a unique pointer in this particular situation. Okay. So wh what I'm saying is that when the app is actually running, if, uh, if the user, is on one sound on on one uh, sound output, and then they want to click on another one. We need that to be able to change during runtime. We don't want it to crash or, you know, have a lot of delay time. So that's the reason that we're using a unique pointer in this situation. Okay, so we're using a unique pointer of type audio device selector component type. Go device selector component and then I'm just going to call this audio settings I'm going to put a space here and then let's see what settings we have in here so then all we have to do is we have to initialize this unique pointer to actually point to um, to a uh, space in memory that's going to be filled with an actual audio device selector component. So the way that we could do this is using the uh, unique pointer reset method. So we got audio settings. I'm just going to put an S here. So audio settings dot reset. Okay. So that just resets the pointer to point towards our actual um, audio get these names mixed up audio device selector component okay so what we can say here is audio settings dot reset and we're going to do a new 
audio device selector component. And then we have some arguments here that we need to declare in, a, in our default uh, constructor. So we got audio device manager that we need to declare. So that's just other device manager. And then we have minimum number of input channels, maximum number of input channels, minimum number of output, maximum number of output. So I'm just gonna do minimum number is gonna be zero and maximum I'm gonna put is two. And then same thing for the output channels. So zero and two. Next one we have, so this is, so this is actually going to pull up like a, a, a settings menu that is going to have uh, where we're going to be able to select a different input and output and be able to select our sample rate and our latency time, I think, buffer size, um, I think our buffer size. So, uh, so what we could do is we can make certain things visible or not visible using these Booleans. So show MIDI input options, uh, show MIDI output selector, show channels as stereo pairs. So we want them to show as stereo pairs. Uh, so I'm just gonna put true for all of these and then hide advanced options with buttons. So what that means is that there's gonna be a button there and then it says show advanced options. We can click on that and then that gives us a couple more options. So I'm just gonna put true for all of these and see what happens. Okay, so that's, let's see, one, two, three, four trues. So we got true, 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 and true. Okay. So that's all good. Now let's see what else that we need here. So we can change the item height if we wanted to. We're just going to leave it default for now. And let's have a look in here, see if there's anything else that we need to do. Um, oh, we need to actually make it visible. So it's a component. So this is this audio settings is a component. Um, and what we could do is we could use add and make visible. And then remember, audio settings isn't an audio device selector component. It's a pointer to an audio device selector component. So what you need to use is the get method to get to where the audio settings pointer is pointing to. So we can use audio settings dot get like that. Okay. And that points to wherever audio settings is pointing to. So now what we need to do is we're going to put set size. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna actually set audio channels. Since we're gonna have two inputs, I'm gonna put two here. And then what we can do is we can put set size down here last. And then we're going to make this a bit bigger. I'm gonna put this at like, let's just say 500. And then if we go down here, we can go, we can use audio settings. And then remember this is a pointer. So we need the arrow operator and then set bounds. So we'll be 10, let's do 10 in, let's do 40 from where our last place. So we got 130 and then we'll use the same width, get width minus 20 and then 30. Uh, actually, let's make it a little bit longer. Let's make it more like 100. Okay, so let's see. I think that this should be everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and compile here. So, by the way, if you're finding this video uh, helpful for you, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed and all that business. Okay, so what we could do is, uh, so this is cool. This is fine. It's, it's showing up and everything. Let's just make it a little bit wider so everything kind of shows up. And let's make this, let's say 400. 
So build again. So here we go. So here we are. Oh, it still still cuts off a little bit of the thing. I'm just going to I'm just going to do it one more time just to make sure that you can see everything. So just so looks nice and neat. Okay. And here we are. Okay. So as you can see, we can select different outputs. We can select different inputs, which I'm not going to mess around with because uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it'll change. Uh, it'll, if it'll cut off my mic input going into my um, Apollo. Uh, and then you can select active output channels, active input channels. If you hit select uh, show advanced settings, then it shows the sample rate. You can change the sample rate. You can change the buffer size. Uh, it shows active MIDI inputs, which we don't have any at the moment. And then MIDI outputs. So let's just open up a file real quick. Let's see if this plays. Then let's hit play. And as you can see, it, uh, it plays just fine. So that's how you set up the settings for... Uh, different sound cards, different sample rates, different buffer sizes. And I hope you found that helpful. Uh, once again, uh, if you found that helpful, just give the video a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And uh, that's the end of this tutorial. And I hope you found it helpful. And I uh, will see you next time.